I never liked long, emotional goodbyes or thinking too much about life's ups and downs. I'm Amelia, 35 years old, a manager. That's all you need to know. I stood there with my suitcase, sweating, feeling the weight of each step as I made my not-so-graceful exit. At the bottom of the stairs, Jeremy smirked at me, thinking I couldn't make it without his money. Linda, always making snide remarks, sat on the couch like she was queen of the world. And Zoe, the new girl, looked uncomfortable, sitting so stiffly. I packed my things, trying to stay calm, but it felt strange to be so ordinary at what felt like the end of everything. Jeremy teased me, asking where my tears were, thinking I was miserable, but I wasn't having it. Linda suggested we have dinner together one last time, daring me to break. The idea seemed crazy. Why would I dine with my ex and his new arm candy? But I couldn't resist the chance to show them I wasn't leaving as a defeated wife. So I surprised everyone and said yes. Zoe looked shocked, not expecting me to join them. Jeremy's smirk faded a bit as he offered to get wine, his attempt at being polite. Linda sent Zoe to fetch it, treating her like a child. Poor Zoe, trying so hard to fit in with those high heels and unsure steps. As we sat down to eat, tension filled the room. Linda smirked, taking a jab at my cooking skills. I forced a smile, thanking her and trying to keep calm. Across from me, Jeremy looked uncomfortable, his face turning red. It was going to be a long night. This dinner was more like a chess game than a meal. Every move needed to be calculated if I wanted to leave with my dignity intact. You know, jobs don't just appear out of nowhere. And the last place? Well, they couldn't see a good worker if one smacked them in the face. I couldn't help but chuckle. A good worker, Jay. They practically kick you out. How much did they say you cost, M? A couple of thousand? Zoe, with a hint of curiosity, poked at her salad, not really eating. Jeremy tensed up, his grip tightening around his knife. It was blown out of proportion, he said, his jaw clenching. I made a small mistake. Amelia was just an easy target. Being late and missing deadlines suddenly made me the villain. I replied calmly, taking a sip from my glass. Linda jumped in, her voice dripping with false sweetness. Accidents happen, right? But so, dear, you must be careful. Clumsiness can run in the family. Zoe gave a tight-lipped smile, her eyes fixed on her plate. Jeremy desperately tried to change the subject. Let's not dwell on the past. I'm focusing on the future. I leaned back, smirking. Sounds grand, Jay, hopefully. This time, the future doesn't have a repeat ending. As an uncomfortable silence settled, Linda cleared her throat, signaling a change of subject. So, any plans after today, dear? Packing up? I glanced around firm in my resolve. First good night's sleep in months, I reckon, I said, finally putting down my fork. Zoe, eager to contribute, spoke up. Oh, it's nothing much. Just an opening in the admin department. Might be something for you to look at. Surprised, I thanked her. Thanks, so. I might just take a look. The meal continued, tension replaced by mundane chatter. Linda eyed me like a hawk, waiting for another opportunity to strike. So tell me, she said with a smirk, still living out of that tiny apartment. I pushed my salad around, barely suppressing a smile. Actually, Linda, I'll be moving soon. Got a little place closer to work now. It's mine. Jeremy choked on his drink, coughing into his napkin. You, a house? Where'd you get that sort of cash? He sputtered. Well, if you'd bothered to ask me about my life in the past year, I said, cutting into my steak. You'd know about the money Grandma left me. All $700,000 of it. His eyes widened greedily. That's half mine. Jeremy blurted out, his fork clattering onto his plate. Linda chimed in, absolutely Jeremy. Married means shared assets. But I leaned back, letting out a laugh. Funny how you'd forget the prenup you shoved in my face. What's mine is mine, and what's yours is yours, wasn't it? So, sitting next to Jeremy with a plate of untouched food, looked at me with a mix of shock and disgust. Poor thing probably didn't sign up for the soap opera. Jeremy's face turned tomato red. That's before I knew you were coming into money, 
he shouted. I took another bite, savoring not just the meal, but the victory. That's just tough luck, I say, giving him a wink. Zoe's eyes dart between us, clearly regretting her choice for the night. Maybe for more than just tonight. And Jeremy? Well, he's in full tantrum mode now, his neck and thrown down with a dramatic flourish. You know what? This is crap. You can't just. I cut him off. Oh, but I can. And it seems like I just did. Dinner goes on, and with every petty jab they throw, I parry with the ease of someone with nothing to lose, because in this tacky dining room with its gaudy chandelier and suffocating small talk, I've never felt freer. After all, there's no place like my own new home, however small and on the other side of town it may be. The sharp scent of roasted chicken mingles with the tang of tension in the air. The dining room feels smaller with every word Linda spits out. And tomorrow, Linda's cheeks flush the same shade as the wine in her glass. I'm calling Mark. You'll be out of a job before you can say unemployment. Everyone at the table could hear the scrape of the knife against the plate as Jeremy cuts into his chicken a little too forcefully. The sound rings out like an alarm, but I can't help it. I start laughing. It bubbles out uncontrollably, a response so absurd against the backdrop of Linda's scowl. What's so funny? Linda practically hisses, her fork covering midair. Jeremy's eyes are wide like a kid caught with his hand in the cookie jar. The room goes still, ready for the drama to explode. Straightening up, I wipe the corner of my eye, still chuckling. You too, I say, shaking my head. You don't know the half of it. Their gazes are like hooks, waiting for the punchline. Four months ago, I landed a new job, head of a department at a big trading company. Paychecks double what I used to make. Silence slams into the room like a wave. Linda's fork drops with a clatter. But it's Jeremy's face I savor. The mix of horror and envy is almost delicious. No, Jeremy finally mutters, his voice a mix of disbelief and resentment. Yep, I pop the pea like bubblegum. And as for calling in favors, I don't need your connections anymore. Then, as if on cue, the doorbell rings. That'll be the movers, I say, shoving my chair back. The screech of its legs against the floor is a fitting soundtrack to Linda's drop jaw. I saunter to the door, heart pounding but free. Opening it, there they are, a couple of burly guys with Hank's moving company stitched on their caps. We're here for your stuff, one of them says, more stating than questioning. Yep, everything that belongs to me that I acquired even before I got involved with my hubby. I say, hitching a thumb toward the dining room where my soon-to-be ex-life was crumbling. The mover shrugs and shuffles by, heading straight for the dining room. Their heavy boots thud on the hardwood, every step a nail in the coffin of this uncomfortable evening. Linda is standing now, her napkin forgotten on her plate. You can't do this, she says, but the bite is gone from her voice. Oh, but I am. There was a sense of joy saying that out loud, watching her struggle for words. Jeremy was hunched at the table, his face buried in his palms, the lines of his back tight like a strong bow. Come on, don't do this, not the sofa. Remember our movie nights? His voice was a soft plea, a distant echo from a time that felt like a different life. I shook my head firmly. The sofa's mine. Jay bought it with my own cash, and you know it. Turning to the movers, I pointed at the bulky behemoth of a couch. That thing needs to go first. Careful with it, it's pricier than it looks. Zoe sat frozen, her eyes wide like saucers. She looked like she wanted to melt into the woodwork. Linda was still shaking her head, her lips pressed into a thin line. You're cleaning us out, girl. What are we supposed to sit on? The floor. Should have thought of that before Jeremy decided to play house with Miss Sunshine here. I didn't bother hiding the bitterness as I swept my hand towards Zoe. The movers were a symphony of grunts and commands, hefting up my furniture with practiced ease. The TV came off the wall with a pop. The dining table was dismantled with a clatter, and even the Dan washing machine was unhooked with a series of clangs and splashes. Jeremy finally stood up, pushing away from the table. You think you've won. His voice wobbled with anger, his nostrils flaring. Checkmate. 
I quipped, heading back towards the kitchen. Plates of uneaten food gazed up at me as I grabbed a bottle of soda. Popping the cap and taking a swig, it wasn't champagne, but the fizz tasted like victory. The movers began hauling boxes, the heavy sound of cardboard thumping against the front door as they passed in and out. I walked back into the dining room, grabbing a few last personal items, a picture frame, a ceramic cat Jeremy always hated, and my favorite mug. All right, all right, but the car too? Jeremy stood up, his face flushed a deep red. You can't be serious. How am I supposed to get to work? I fished the car keys from my pocket, twirling them around my finger. You shouldn't have read the fine print, baby. That car is in my name. I tossed the keys to one of the movers. Park it outside my new place, will you? By the time we were done, the house was as bare as a skeleton, stripped clean. Linda sat on the hardwood floor, her back against the wall, while Jeremy stared through the gaping space where the TV once was. And before I turned to leave, with one last look at the shell of our shared past, I said, You should thank me, really. It's not every day you get a fresh start, free from all the old junk. Linda was fuming, her hands clenched into fists that kept opening and closing. You're nothing without this family, she spat out, every word a poison dart. Funny thing was, I felt lighter than I had in years. I looked at her, at Jeremy, at the life I was leaving behind. Jeremy watched me, eyes reading his chest heaving like he was running out of air. Greed, anger, regret. They were written all over him. And I knew, even as I turned my back on that chapter, I would never forget that look. Escaping the clamor of Jeremy's house, I breathed deep. The cool air was a slap to my skin, a wake-up call. I was free, but Jeremy wasn't going to let go without a fight. You think you've won, huh? Jeremy's voice came from behind the door. You'll regret this, mark my words. You'll end up just an old hag with a bunch of cats. I could hear the anger boiling in his veins. I didn't care. Done was done, and I was out of there. I was nearly at my car when the front door burst open again. There was Jeremy, red-faced and pompous. You know, I've got Zoe now. She's half your age and twice as hot. His barb was meant to wound, but it missed its mark, because right then Zoe herself appeared, flinging Jeremy's arm off her like it was a filthy rag. Keep dreaming, Jay, she snapped. She didn't even glance my way as she stomped down the steps, fury in her heels. She was done playing the pretty little girlfriend prop. Jeremy stumbled after her like a man who'd just been kicked in the gut. Zoe, babe, don't be like that. Come on. But Zoe spun around, and the look she shot him would have curdled milk. Like what, Jeremy? Like someone who just saw the light. You're a jerk, and your mama. She's a dictator in a floral apron. I ain't marrying into the circus. The color drained from Jeremy's face quicker than a leak in a balloon. He spluttered, no comebacks, no charm. This is it, Jeremy. We are done. Zoe's words were like nails in a coffin, precise and final. Jeremy's mother, Linda, had appeared in the doorway too. Her face twisted like she'd swallowed something nasty. Zoe, you can't leave my boy. We have plans for you, she hissed, probably thinking of wedding bells and grandkids. But Zoe wasn't having a bar of it. I said I'm done. Go find another puppet for your little show. She stormed off her heels clicking like a ticking time bomb. There I was, leaning against my car, trying real hard not to let the grin split my face. Watching Jeremy and Linda shrink in the rearview mirror felt better than I'd imagined. Hey, and don't think you've gotten away with this, Jeremy was shouting, but his words were like rain against my car window. Persistent, but insignificant. I rolled down the window a sliver, just enough to let my voice carry. Actually, I think I just did. I gave him a look, one that said I knew I'd won, then rolled the window back up before he could spew another word. I hit the gas and didn't look back. In my rear view, Jeremy's figure got smaller, his rage drowned out by the growl of the engine. Ahead of me, the street stretched out, the night just beginning to shimmer with possibilities. Looking at the empty seat next to me, I'd be lying if I said I didn't feel a twinge of something like triumph, sweet and raw, no regrets, no looking back.
When my phone buzzed that morning, the last name I expected to flash on the screen was Zoe. Yeah, that's her. The doll whose sharp tongue and don't care attitude had sent Jeremy and his mother, Linda, home with their tails between their legs. My lips curled into a smug grin. I swiped at the screen. Hey, Zoe, I said, leaning back on my kitchen counter, a little confused. Hey, it's me. Just thought I'd ring you up, you know, to say thanks, her voice chirped through. For what? I leaned back on my kitchen counter, a little confused. But curious for yesterday, you were freaking badass, opening my eyes about Jeremy and Linda. Ah, that, I laughed. It was a cold laugh. No joy in it, trust me. I didn't do anything. You saw them for what they are, all on your own. Yeah, well, I just wanted to say I appreciate it. So thank you, she insisted. I could hear the genuine tone in her voice. No problem. Just watch your back, okay? We said our goodbyes and hung up. The phone felt heavy in my hand as I tapped it against my chin, pondering the weirdness of it all. I had just been thanked by the woman who was fooling around with my ex-husband for helping her dodge a bullet. Life sure was strange. I mulled over my conversation with Zoe while I threw together a sandwich, the heel of the bread, some old cheese, and that last sorry slice of ham. I wasn't in the mood for anything fancy. I slumped down at my tiny kitchen table, taking a bite out of the uneven sandwich. I chewed slowly, the bread dry and sticking to the roof of my mouth. That could have been me. Stuck in that cycle with Jeremy and Linda. But it wasn't. I had broken free. Later that day, I sat down with a pen and a notepad. I was old school like that. A thank you note. Never thought I'd write one of those to my ex's side chick. But here we were. I scribbled quickly, not fussing over the words, just letting them spill out raw. And I told Zoe she was welcome, that she was better off now, even if it didn't seem like it yet. I told her to keep her head high and to never let some two-timing jerk and his manipulative mom tell her who she was. And I signed it simply, with no flares or niceties. The note was brief, to the point. It was enough. I sealed it in an old envelope I found in a drawer, grabbed my keys, and headed out. I dropped the letter in the mailbox, no need for face-to-face. -face. The words said it all. Walking back to my apartment, I kicked at a stray pebble. Life had given me lemons, and I didn't make lemonade. I threw those lemons back hard, and now I was helping others do the same. I had made peace with my past, with Jeremy, and surprisingly, I had made peace with Zoe too. The world kept turning, bizarre as it was, but at least for today, it was turning in my favor. The lawyer had one of them smirks when he handed me the last paper. It's all yours now, he said loud enough for Jeremy to hear across the room. Nice doing business with you, I said, rolling my eyes a bit as I took the paperwork. The ink felt fresh and symbolic, the full stop at the end of a long, dragged-out story. Jeremy didn't say nothing. He just stood there, looking like someone had taken the ground from under him, probably realizing his mom's plan had backfired. Linda, she had a face like thunder, her lips thin like she'd been sucking on lemons. Can you believe this? After everything I did, Linda's voice trailed off into a sort of hiss. I didn't answer, just clutched my papers a bit tighter as I walked out of the courthouse building and into my little car, that old thing that survived the marriage far better than I did. I caught Linda's eye. She was staring at me from her big shiny car, probably feeling her age and her mistakes. You got what you wanted, huh? Jeremy puffed out as he caught up with me, his hands shoved deep into his pockets, shoulders hunched. I turned to him, the feeling of being finally free making me bold. No, Jeremy, I got what I deserved. There's a difference. My phone beeped, a message from Stella, a friend who'd stuck by me like glue. Drinks tonight? She asked. I couldn't help but smile. Stella got it. Hell yes, I texted back, slipping into the driver's seat. There was a quiet, not the uneasy quiet like at Jeremy's place, but the kind that lets you hear yourself think. As the engine came to life with a familiar rattle, I felt something twist in my stomach, excitement, nerves. My new home felt different now. I stepped inside, the echo of my footsteps the only welcome, but it was enough. 
my eyes roamed over the place. It was a mess of boxes and furniture that had seen better days, but it was mine. I spent the next few hours moving stuff around, unpacking, and tossing what I didn't need. I made room, my room, a space that felt more like me by the minute. Next day, I drove to work. Work was the kind of busy that kept thoughts at bay and made the day fly by. At lunch, the girls were all ears. You okay, Jess? The office gossip asked, her eyes all concern and curiosity. Better than okay, I answered, with no shadow of a lie. The drive home was meditative. The road stretched like my future. Uncertain, yeah, but mine all the same. That night, Stella and I hit the bar. It was loud and full, just like life should be. We tossed back drinks and threw our heads back with laughter that drew looks to new beginnings. Stella said, holding up her glass to tomorrow. To tomorrow, I replied, and we drank to that, tomorrow and the day after, and all the days to follow. Because that's the thing about tomorrow. It's always on its way. And now, so was I, ready for whatever the hell it decided to bring.